in this lecture we shall be continuing with our discussion on java applets if you recall in our earlier class we had mainly talked about the differences between java applications and applets and we had also looked at some of the examples how java applets can be written how an applet can be included or embedded from within an html page so today the first thing that we look at is how we can convert any arbitrary java application to a java applet now this issue is important because we had mentioned earlier that we have java applications which can be written to perform any arbitrary task any sort of complex or sophisticated animation which can be done using that program but in order to be used along with a web page in the internet scenario we need to convert that program into an applet which can be linked and also downloaded along with an html document so let us see or look at this issue first first thing to note is that it is not very difficult rather it is straightforward to convert an application to an applet we call it graphical because most often than not we have graphical applications that are running on web pages so the application that we want to convert is most often a graphical application an application with graphics now the reason it is straightforward is that uh, you know in java the classes that we use from which the objects are derived they are all instantiated or they are all inherited from other super classes or parent classes now in application or applet the classes that are used by default they all descend from the same parent class that is why the way they work the way they function the methods they use they are somewhat quite similar so you need not have to make much change or much modification to an application to make it work as an applet specifically an applet uses the applet class an application uses the frame class both of which descend from the parent class called container so essentially what i have told that because of this we can use the same methods and we can use the same user interface component descriptions in both the application and the applet let us now look specifically at the different steps we need to follow to carry out or effect this conversion first thing of course this i have already mentioned that in order to convert an application to an applet you need to create an html file because an applet has to reside along with an html document from the html document you need to provide a link to the applet which will be downloaded along with the html file so the first thing you need to do is to have an html file with an applet tag which will specify the name of the applet byte code or the class file the size of the applet window and other optional attributes which we had mentioned in our last class secondly one characteristic of a java application is the existence of the main method whenever you execute a java application by default it is the main method which executes first from the main method you can call other methods right so in an application the main method normally can will contain some code to create a new frame object in which the different graphical item or user or user interface components would be included so it is the main method which initializes the context under which the application has to run but in an applet the situation is slightly different we do not exclusively call an applet just like a java application so that there is no question of explicitly calling the main method rather the creation of the applet and the and the initiation or the beginning of execution 
is done automatically by the browser after the applet has been loaded successfully into the browser. So, whereas, for an application you need to explicitly type in a command to run it for a applet it is automatic it gets downloaded along with the html file and as soon as download completes the applet gets initiated or executed immediately by the browser ok. This does not need any user intervention. The main method when it creates a new frame object it creates or it defines the frame size. For the applet however, here also we need to specify the size of the window in which the program has to run, but here this information is provided by the width and the height attributes which are present in the applet tag of the html document. This need not be specified within the applet ok the size. Third, an applet is derived from the class applet, an application is derived from frame. So, when you are converting an application to an applet, instead of deriving it from frame, you need to derive it from the applet class. Fourthly, you need to replace the constructor of the Java application with a method called init. Just to recall, the constructor of a Java class represents a method having the same name as the class, which is executed by default whenever an instance of that class is created. Whenever you create an object, the constructor class or the, the constructor method is automatically invoked and it is the responsibility of the constructor to make or create all the initializations before the other methods can be invoked ok. So, in a Java application you have the constructor, in applet you have an equivalent method called init. So, the constructor function has to be replaced by a function called init. So, whatever initializations you need to do which were earlier within the constructor now it will go inside init. So, so, an applet when it executes whenever the browser will create the object after creation the init method will be automatically called ok. Next there is the issue regarding the layout manager, well any Java program you write whatever graphics you create that is created based on some library based on a layout manager. Java application by default use the border layout manager, while applet use the flow layout manager. So, if you had an application which was written assuming the border layout manager, when you convert it into an applet which by default uses the flow layout manager, you will have to explicitly specify that well you do not use the default layout manager, but rather use the border layout manager. This can be done by explicitly including the following statement in the init method set layout new border layout. This will be overriding the default layout manager in the applet. Applets have no concept of title bars. So, if there are any set title calls in an application just remove them. And lastly, you import the library java.applet.star at the beginning of the program to include the methods that are applicable to applets. Let us now look at an example which will illustrate the process of the conversion. Now, the example that we take is as follows the Java program will be creating a set of menu buttons which will be displayed inside a frame. The buttons will be labeled with different colors like red, blue, green and white and the purpose of the button is that if you click a particular button with the mouse the background color will get changed to that particular color. So, 
this is what the program is given to you. We will start with an application, then we shall see how the application can be converted into an applet. Let us look at the application first. So, an application name of the Java program or the Java class file here, we have assumed to be button demo. This extends frame. So, by default, it is a frame class from where this descends. This is an example of the constructor object that we have mentioned. So, it is a method having the same name as the class button demo. So, whenever there is a method with a name same as the name of the class file that is constructed or this is considered as the constructor and whenever you are running the application, this method will be called first. So, here you see what is there in the button demonstration. First line there is a title button demonstration, this will appear at the top. So, you create or specify the layout manager, flow layout manager. You add four buttons on your screen on your frame with labels red, blue, green and white. So, this new button this will be creating a new instance of a button with a label red and add will be creating that object button on the current frame being displayed. So, this is the constructor method. Then comes the event handler. So, this is an public boolean handle event, this is an event handler method. So, if you are closing the window, this will generate a window destroy method. So, this event handler simply says if the event type, if the id of that event v dot id is this event dot the window destroy which is the type, then you exit with an exit code of 0. Otherwise, if it is some other event, you return to super dot handle event v. That means, you are recursively calling the parent object from where this object was derived. So, that you are saying that I will not handle the event myself, I will leave it to my parent to handle it. And this method action by default is called whenever some kind of an event or, or, or action takes place like for example, I am pressing the mouse button. So, I want whenever I click on one of the buttons on the mouse, I need to change the color. So, it is this action method which will be invoked whenever I press the mouse button. Here if you look at the function, it takes as argument the event and which object was clicked or on which object this, this event took place. But is the type of object? You check if the id or the name of the object, this you can check using the equals function. If but dot equals red is true, which means you have clicked the red button, then you, you call the method set background with color dot red, you set the color attribute to red. Else if you click blue, then you set it to blue and so on. So, if it is none of the valid button, some other event, then you return false. Repaint is a function which will allow you to refresh the window, so that whatever color you have selected, the window will get refreshed with the new color, so that the changed color in the background will be reflected immediately. So, this is how the application will look like and finally, you have the main method which simply creates a frame, button demo is the name of the class. It specifies the size of the frame 300 by 300 and show is a method which is called to actually display the Java application on the created frame. So, now the Java application is starting. When you are invoking the method show, actually the Java program starts running. This is how the application is. Now, we want to convert this application 
into an applet. Let us see. So, after conversion, the applet version looks like this. The first thing I told you, we have added this line import java dot applet dot star at the beginning. The name of the applet we have given as color applet. Now, instead of the constructor method, we have given or we have created a method called init, which consists mainly the same set of statements which are there in the constructor of the application. Four buttons were created. Only thing was that you explicitly set the layout manager here, right? This is what is done here. The event handler and action they are same, there is no change out here. These methods are already existing in the object or the class from where a frame or an applet is derived. So, you need not have to change the event handler or the action methods at all they will remain the same. The only change is that you do not uh, add any um, title to it. So, now let us look at something called applet life cycle. We have seen how an applet can be written and applet can be created starting from a Java application which perhaps is something which you have written to start with from an application how to convert it to an applet we have specified the different steps to be followed, also illustrated the process with the help of a simple example, but even if it is a more complex example, you should be following more or less the same sequence of steps. Now, let us look at some very specific methods that pertain to an applet only, these are applet specific methods. Now, applet is supposed to be displayed as part of a browser. So, there are certain events which are specifically you can say uh, relevant with respect to the browser like I can close a browser, I can open a browser, I can put one window on top of another window. So, when I am closing the browser, do I need to still continue running the applet or I should suspend the applet, let it come up into my view again and it will again be started. So, these are some issues and this leads to some different states of an applet and the so called applet life cycle. So, let us look at the so called applet life cycle now. So, when you are writing an applet as I said there are methods that belong to the applet class which are already there by default we sometimes write our own methods with the same names that means we are overriding the existing methods now when you override the method for example there may be a method already existing called paint or repaint i am writing the paint method again explicitly so when i write I should be very clear about the side effects. If I change or modify an existing method which was there as part of the derived class, what are the side effects I can expect to encounter. So, the, the possible side effects I should know. I should know when the methods are invoked and what kind of codes should be placed in which method, because I told you in an applet there are several types of standard methods available and each of the methods have a specific purpose. So, unless you know when they are called, why they are called you will not be able to clearly tell that which code has to be put inside which method. Okay. So, let us look at the methods first which are applet specific. Now, in the example that we had seen, we had already seen the init method and we had told, we had mentioned that the init method is invoked whenever the applet is started, whenever the applet is executed on the browser for the first time. So, all the 
initializations that the applet requires with respect to the window, with respect to color, everything, with respect to the buttons and the other GUI components you need, they will all have to be done by this init method, right. This init method you should understand this is called only once when the applet is loaded. So, whatever code you should put inside init, it should be the code which is executed only once at the beginning and not executed any time in the future, this you should understand. There is another method called start. The method start is invoked after you invoke init. So, this method is either invoked after init or as the starting point or the resumption point of an applet after it was stopped and you want to restart it again. So, a typical situation when this might happen is this, suppose I was displaying an applet as part of a page, a web page on the browser. In the meantime, I type in some URL and I go to some other page or I click a link, I go to some other page. So, now the applet is no more on the page. Now, again from that new page, I can press back, I can come back to my original page which contained the applet. So, now the applet has to be resumed. So, it is at this point we can invoke the start method again, right. So, so the start method is invoked every time we want to resume execution of the applet. So, simplistically speaking, every time the applet window is refreshed or the code is displayed on the screen, you have to invoke start. See, if a window was closed, you are opening again. So, again the code has to be displayed, you went to some page, you are coming back to the page again, then also you need to display. So, under this situation where you need to display the HTML document again, so under these circumstances, the start method will be invoked. There is a method called paint. This will be called every time the window is damaged. So, if you put one window on top of the applet window, again remove it, bring it on top. So, the earlier window was damaged. So, in this time the paint will be called which will be refreshing the window. And update is a similar function method which first fills the window with the background color and then calls paint. So, normally you would be calling update which will first initializing initialize the window with the default background color, then it will refresh the graphics which is there using the method paint. Stop is a method which is used to temporarily stop the applet from running. This is typically called when the browser moves to some other document. Suppose you type some other URL or click a link as I said and some other document is displayed on the browser. So, during this time there is no point in continuing to run the applet which may be an animation applet, okay, animation thread which is a time consuming activity to be consuming CPU time. So, if the applet at all is not visible to us, there is no point in continue running the applet thereby consuming CPU time. Rather you suspend or stop the applet till it becomes visible again. Okay. So, stop is used to temporarily suspend the applet. Now, these activities can be restarted if we invoke start method again in the future, right. And finally, destroy is a method which is called when you want to you want to permanently remove the applet from the memory. Permanently remove means whatever resources the applet might be using including memory, they will all be removed or relinquished. Now, this destroy method can be called when you are closing the browser window altogether or if the applet itself there is an explicit button to close this application, close this program. If you click it, then the destroy method will be invoked and the applet will be 
removed from the memory totally. Okay. So, these are the different methods and just what I said, if you look at this diagram, this diagram summarizes the same thing. The circular nodes are the states of an applet and each edge or the state transition is labeled by a method. So, from the beginning whenever the applet starts, the init method is invoked. So, the applet starts from the initialization state to an initialized state, then the start method is invoked, now the applet is running here. Now, at this point if you invoke stop, then it goes to a suspended state. From the suspended state if you invoke start again, it comes back to the active state. If you if call destroy, then the applet is removed from memory, this is the terminated state. And if while executing somehow the window gets damaged, you go to a temporary stage which means active, but damaged. So, whenever the window becomes prominent again, you will have to call update to initialize the background color, then to call paint to redraw the objects which are present in the window again. So, this simple state transition diagram summarizes the life cycle of an applet, what are the methods which can cause state transition, what are the typical functions of this method and when they are called. So, with this understanding you will be in a position to know what piece of code should be included or put inside which part of the applet. Now, let us look at a situation when we want to put multiple applets on the same page. Now, earlier we had said that it is indeed possible to put more than one application on the same page it is also possible it is also possible for them to communicate among themselves one applet can send some data to the other other applet can send back or can call a method of the other and so on let's see through a simple example how this can be done as i said a html page can have more than one applet now we we typically would want these applets to interact among themselves, which means one applet may have access to the public variables and methods of the other applets. How we do this? We do this by invoking a method called get applet context, which gives us a mean, which gives the applet a mean to communicate with the browser. The browser will actually return when you make a call to this an object of type applet context, which actually is a pointer or a means to access the other applet you want to. From one applet, you can make a call to this method, you get an object of applet context type using which you can access the methods and the variables of the other applet. Now, this you can do by using the name tag in the HTML document when you are including the applet. So, the get applet method of the applet context class, we shall see and through an example that how we can refer to an applet like this. But the constraint is that you can only carry out this kind of communication between applets on the same page. One applet located on one page cannot communicate with another applet on a different web page. Okay this is a constraint you will have to remember. All right. The example that we look at is this, the two applets we consider, one is with a name gui dot dot class and the other with a name compute dot class. These two applets have been assigned the names first and second in the HTML file using the name attribute. Okay. The GUI class what it does is it actually reads in the amount of money in rupees 
So, by default it reads in a value which indicates the money in rupees okay? and it also reads in a currency type dollar, dollar euro or something else. Okay? The compute dot class actually will read whatever data was fed in the GUI class including the amount and the currency type and will contain a method called convert which will convert rupee into the currency of the type specified. So, the idea is like this one applet simply allows the user to type in the amount in rupees and the currency type. The other applet has a method which can convert the rupee into the into the currency type specified. So, the first applet will be calling the second applet with the parameters user has entered and the result that is coming back will be used to display the result back on the screen. This is what this example will do. First let us look at the HTML file. So, the title is currency conversion demo. There are two applets. The first applet GUI class, the name that we have given is first, some width and height of this applet is given. The second applet is not actually meant to be displayed on the screen, that is why the height as a token width and height are given small numbers 10 by 10. Compute dot class, the name is given as second. This is just a dummy example, so no other HTML code is there. Okay. Now, let us see what is there in the two Java GUI class and compute class. This is the GUI dot Java applet. In the GUI dot Java applet, what we have is this, first we have the init method. In now, the init method we create a new panel. On the panel, we set the layout manager to flow layout. Then we add a label to the panel rupees. Just alongside this, we add a text field of size 8 and add that text field to the panel. Secondly, we add another label called currency and another text field where the new currency is to be typed in. Here the default width is 10, this also we add. So, there are two, you can say two form elements have been added, in one of which I will be typing in the amount, in the other I will be typing in the new currency name, dollar or whatever. And there is another field I am adding, this is the result, result of conversion. So, here the text field I am assuming of size 50, this also we are adding and all these panels we are adding to the bottom of the panel south. Now, the event handler is similar to the example we have shown earlier, so nothing to say here. And Whenever some action takes place, whenever you click on something on the convert, then this method gets to execute. Here you see what we are doing r dot get text. This we are storing into x. If you go back, you see the labels that we create. The first label where you are typing in the rupee the name of the text field was r. Okay. So, here we write r dot get text. So, we read the contents of that particular field, store it into x after converting to integer, ASCII to integer conversion. String y equal to nc get text. In the other field nc, it is already a string, it is the, the currency type dollar, baht or whatever I am uh, typing there. So, that as a string we are storing in x and here in the third line we are invoking a particular method of the other applet. So, first we are getting an applet context, compute is the name of the second applet. Okay. So, we are creating an object 
of type compute, we are calling the get applet context object, the get applet method of that with the name of the second applet as parameter. So, it returns a pointer to the second applet p. Now, we can call here you see p dot convert x y. We can now call the convert method of the second applet with the parameters x and y and the third panel element here which is result, we are setting the result set text to a value. First the rupee value r get text we trim any spaces will be trimmed deleted concatenant with rupees equal to you convert it plus the amount you have typed in the nc part. So, in this way you can actually, so you will, will be showing here as 1000 rupees equal to say 25 dollars something like this will be displayed and r and nc are private fields which are not to be accessed from outside. Now, the other applet the compute dot java looks like this where in the init function it simply creates a panel, creates some labels. All these are optional, you can omit all these things because the second applet does not really require any kind of graphics. There is a text field result, all these are again optional, I told you, these are not needed. What is needed is this method called convert, it takes two parameters. If the currency type equals the string dollar, then say you divide rupee by 45 and return it. If, if it equals the Thailand currency baht, then you divide by 1.2 or if it if it equals any other currency x y z, you make the appropriate calculation. So, in this way through and if, if then else, you can carry out any arbitrary currency conversion based on whatever currency type you have typed in. So, this simple example shows you how one applet can call some method of another applet passing some arguments and getting back the return result and using it for some subsequent calculation. Okay. So, let us look at some more examples of applets, some very specific things. We first look at how we can access image files from an applet, because this is something which is quite popularly used. We often find or see an applet where some kind of, uh, of a photo album is being showed cyclically automatically. So, how we go on changing the image being displayed on the screen from a Java program applet, let us see that. Now, when you are trying to display an image or an applet, first thing is that you need to access the image file. So, the image file you can retrieve using the get image method. Now, the get image method has two forms where you directly specify the URL, where you can get an image file specified directly by the URL. Secondly, you give a relative path and the URL is subsequent to that string path. So, the second form will be using the string to provide a path relative to the URL. For example, in the URL path you give http www.iitkgp.ac.in, in the string path portion you give slash docs slash images slash a dot jpg. So, you can separate these two components out of an URL, so as to make your program look more structured instead of typing very long URLs every time. So, a typical use will be like this, because the advantage is that this, this URL a need not be typed every time, because if you call the method get document base, then by default it will return the base URL of the current document. So, the string path can be specified like this images slash logo dot gif with respect to the base document. So, this is a typical use of this function.
Now, here we show an example where two images are displayed alternately in response to some window event. Now, window event means some event that is occurring on the window. So, either we are clicking the mouse on the window or we are closing a window opening it again. So, suppose initially this on the window the image 1 was displayed, I close it open it again I will see that now image 2 is displayed, I close and open again, again I will see image 1 is displayed. So, this will continue happening. So, first the HTML file, here in the HTML file you see, here I have the applet, the name of the code is called image view dot class, size I have specified, this size will be approximately equal to the size of the image and the two image files are specified as parameters. So, in order to make the applet program general, these parameters are passed from HTML. So, for the first one, the name of the parameter is m1 and the value is face 1 dot gif, for the second one name is m2 and the file name is face 2 dot gif. Okay. Now, let us look at the actual code, the code is fairly simple, this is the class image view. So, here we have boolean flag which we are initializing it to true, this flag actually indicates that which of the two images will be displayed. The, the way the program is written is that if flag is true, then one image will be displayed, if flag is false, then the other image will be displayed. Okay. So, the flag is a boolean variable which is used to keep track of the fact that which image is to be displayed next. So, x and y are two variables of type image this is the init method, this gets executed only once. So, in this example what needs to be done exactly once is to get the two image files, get access to the image files. So, you call this get image function with get document base and if you look at the previous page, in the param with name m1, I am assigning the file name face 1 dot zip this is the parameter value. So, here I am calling the get parameter method to retrieve the value of this parameter which will be phase 1 dot gif. Similarly, in the second one it will be phase 2 dot gif. So, the two files you have specified you actually open the two images and assign it to variables x and y, this x and y are variables of type image. So, in the init method, we are actually opening two image objects, assigning one of them to x and the other to y, this is what we are doing here. Here this is the paint, so every time the window gets destroyed and it comes up, we need to call paint. So, every time we close the window and open it again, this is a window event, here this paint method will be called. Okay. So, let us see what we are doing in paint. In paint, we are comparing that boolean variable flag, if it is true then we are drawing x using the draw image method. Parameters are x the name of the image object, the coordinate 0 0 from where in the window the image has to be displayed and this represents in which frame or window, this means the current one. And we make flag to false after it, so that next time when you come you go to the else part. Similarly, the else part you are displaying the image y and then you are making flag to true. So, as this example shows you, you see this example once more that if flag is true you come here display x, if flag is false you come here display y. So, every time the window is closed you open it again, the method paint gets invoked and alternately once the image x other time image y would be displayed cyclically. So, this is what we want wanted, there are two images, 
they will be displaying simult means display alternately. So, this program you can generalize to handle any number of events, any number of images which will be displayed one after the other or, in, or any particular order, delay may be different whatever you can do using Java you can implement here. Okay. You can use some functions where you can specify the delays, all these things can be done. Lastly, we look at an example where we show how we can include audio clips inside a Java applet. This is another application which we require or use quite often as part of Java applets, which shows you attractive web pages. So, there are methods again existing for this. There is a method called get audio clip using which you can retrieve a audio object from a specified file, specified URL. So, just like image there are two alternate forms, in the first form you can specify the URL directly, in the second form you can specify the base URL and the path relative to the base URL, just like the image case you have this get audio clip method which you can invoke in one of these two ways. To play the, the audio clip you have loaded you can use the play method, play method again has two parameters you can either specify play URL or play URL the base URL and the string path. Of course, another form is there which I have not shown here you can call play without any parameter, this third form will by default play the audio image which was loaded previously using this get audio clip method. Okay. So, if you already have loaded a particular audio clip using get audio clip, you can just call play subsequently. So, the last audio clip loaded would get played by default or you can specify the clip ID as a parameter, okay. fine. Some typical usages of the play function are as follows, here you can either uh, say here in the first one you create a variable of type audio clip and you get an audio clip by calling this method get audio clip with a call to the get document base which gives the base URL and the relative path where you get anthem.au and then with this returned variable object you call play anthem.play, so the last one will start playing or you can directly invoke play also get document base and anthem.au. So, in either of two these, these uh, two approaches you can play audio clips. Now, in the same way we have just shown a couple of examples to show that from a Java when you are designing an applet it is rather easy to include images audio clips as examples. Now, in an applet which is supposed to be there as part of a web page, these kind of requirements are essential because they help you in designing very attractive web pages with multimedia contents. So, in general you can have other kinds of contents also like you can have an MPEG video clip, you can have a streaming video clip, you can have any kind of content you can think of provided the appropriate library is available to you which you can include as an object and you can call the methods of that object to load it to play it in whatever way you want. For example, if you consider a video clip then the methods that may be present under them would not only just be play it can be fast forward, rewind, position to a particular point, stop, pause all these things. So, all these methods will be very much 
media dependent and Java actually has full support for almost all kinds of media that are intended to be included as part of web pages. So, it helps you in designing web pages in a very convenient way. Now, in our next lecture we shall be continuing our discussion and we shall show that how Java also can be used very easily for developing network applications. We shall see that how easy it is to write client server programs in Java. You can write a Java client, you can write a Java server, they can be applets, one of them can be applet, other can be a Java program running on the server, they can communicate among themselves. And the amount of additional lines of code you need to write for this is very very small as compared to an equivalent code you write in a language like C or C++ say for example. So, Java is also very suitable for, for network or internet programming, this we shall see in our next class. So, with this uh, we come to the end of uh, whatever we had to discuss today. So, now let us look at some of the solutions to the questions we posed in our last class. The first question was why do we consider Java to be secure? Now, this we had already mentioned in the last class I am again repeating because this is a very important concept to understand. Java programs are downloaded from some other website and we would expect that when you are downloading and running them on my client machine the Java program should not do any kind of harm or should not be able to retrieve any sensitive information that might be present on my local file system. Okay. So, Java programs typically are not allowed to invoke any local executable, they are not allowed to access the local file system, they can communicate with only the web server from where the Java program was downloaded, they cannot communicate with any other server. And moreover, since they have do not have access to the local file system, they cannot access any sensitive information that are present on the local file system like for example, username, email address or any other such information which are very personal centric which we do not want to share with others on the internet. What makes Java programs platform independent? Now, this we have mentioned that basically the presence of the Java runtime or the Java virtual machine helps in making Java programs platform independent, because Java programs are compiled into a platform independent byte code format. Byte code format is platform independent, you can freely copy them, you can freely download them over the internet, byte code is the same on all machines, but it is the Java virtual machine which has to be there on your machine to make your machine Java ready or Java enabled. So, if you have that JVM installed on your machine, you can download Java byte codes and run them on your machine. And as I said JVM or the Java runtime exists today on almost all computing platforms that are in existence. What is the difference between Java byte code and Java runtime? Java byte code is actually that intermediate code, this is the machine code of that hypothetical machine which is generated by the Java compiler. On the other hand Java runtime is the interpreter which executes the byte code. What is the difference between a Java an application and a Java applet? This we have said repeatedly Java application is a standalone program which typically is executed in a standalone fashion. Whereas, an applet is linked to a web page, it cannot execute independently, it gets executed along with the website in which it is, it is executed along with the web page. So, the web page comes along with the Java, Java applet which gets displayed along with the surrounding HTML code. 
how can you pass parameters to an applet from the HTML page? This we shall we have seen already through through examples that we can use the param tag with the name and value attributes to pass the parameters, and the param parameters can be accessed by invoking the get parameter method. Lastly, is it possible to invoke a method of some other applet from another applet on the same page? Yes, we have looked an example. We had seen that we can use the get applet method to do so. The example which was discussed today illustrates this in detail. So, now some questions from today's lecture. Why do we need to sometime convert a Java application into an applet? What is the purpose of the init method? What is the purpose of the start method? What is the purpose of the paint method? How can an applet A invoke a method of applet B, where both A and B are included in the same HTML page? How do you change the displayed image on an applet? So, as I said in our next lecture, we shall be continuing with a discussion on Java programming with special emphasis on how to write or create client, client server applications using Java. Till then, goodbye. In this lecture, we shall be talking about client server programming in Java. Now, if you recall from our last two lectures, we had looked at the various features of Java, we had, we had seen that how some of the features of Java makes it suitable to be used in a platform independent way as a language which can be used very conveniently over the internet. Today, we shall see basically how to create or how to write network programs in Java, whereby two Java programs over a network can communicate among themselves. Now, you recall earlier we had talked about some of the concepts of client server programming. So, before we actually go into how we can write such network programs in Java, let us have a quick recapitulation of our basic concepts on client server programming. So, let us have a quick recap of the client server model. 